أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everybody to Friday's class. Uh, we'll just give everybody a chance to come into the class. There's just been a slight delay, so if you just bear with us. Okay, so whilst we are waiting, uh, for everybody to join the class, let's just quickly remind ourselves of the class etiquettes. Okay, so we're just going to wait a few more seconds for everybody to join in. And whilst we're waiting for those students, um, just a reminder that we do, like all of our students, uh, insist that they come to class with wadu and that you're wearing clean clothes. And as per our tradition, you have your head covered and you sit in a quiet place, as well as um, having ideally um, an older person sitting with you, your mum, your dad, um, anybody older who knows um, uh, how to read Quran. Um, please ensure you are in, with, signed in with your correct ID. Uh, it's very important for, for you to be with your correct ID. On Fridays, we become a little bit more relaxed uh, for those that um, have come in without their correct ID. But Mondays to Thursdays, we will be very strict. Anybody with incorrect ID will not be admitted to class. Um, just like as in schools, you're not going to be allowed into school unless uh, the people there know who you are and expect you. It's the same with an online classroom. We need to know that the people who are in class uh, are authorized to be here. It's for everybody's safety. Okay, so let's now, I think everybody's here, let's go to our prayers. And if I can ask my colleague to call a student to the mic, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Can I ask G1580 to unmute their mic? G1580, assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. G15. Zero seven. Okay, not to worry. If we could have somebody else. Um, sure. Can I ask G one four two one to unmute their mic? G one four two one. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Why is everybody having so much difficulty? Let's try somebody. G1515, G1515. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, darling. How are you? Good. How are you? Alhamdulillah, very well. Jazakumullah, darling, for asking. So, can I just take your ID, darling? G1421. Okay. So, fantastic, mashallah. So, you have, we always start with dua um, and we do Dawood and Tasbiyah. Are you able to recite Dawood for me? It's on the screen. Okay, go for it, darling. Mashallah. And now the Tasmiya. Mashallah, mashallah. Okay, so let's go to Friday. And this is the dua for Friday. Do you know how to recite this dua, darling, by yourself? No. Okay, so let me read it for you and you follow along with me, okay? Everybody else at home, please listen and also follow, okay? Rabbana. Rabbana. Taqabbal minna. Taqabbal minna. Mashallah. Innaka. Innaka. Mashallah, mashallah. Very nicely recited. So, so you have all of the uh, material that we used in class, including this um, prayer sheet, is all um, on the Google Drive. And uh, if you can possibly ask your mom or dad to go to it, they can download the material and you can practice reading this, okay? And then, inshallah, by the end of the course, you might even have memorized it, okay? And if you don't uh, go to the Google Drive, not to worry, 
you can always go to the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 128 is where you'll find this prayer. Okay? Okay, so have a go at trying to learn it and memorize it, okay? Okay, then, sweetheart. Jazakumullah for coming to the mic and gracing us with your lovely, lovely voice. Uh, Assalamu alaikum for now, darling. Allah Hafiz darling. Okay, so today uh, we are going to uh, be listening to the practice of uh, the lessons that we've done during the week. And this week we've basically done extended elongation. Uh, we've done Madhe Sagir, Madhe Kabir, and then uh, we introduced what we call disjointed letters and something that's called Madhe Lazim to you um, as well. And then yesterday you had a revision of uh, extended elongation as well as lesson number 18. Now today in your breakout rooms when you go there you will uh, be reading from exercise 19.1 and 19.2 and your teachers will ask you to read certain words from those. Okay so all of the practice that you've done during the week um, inshallah it'll pay off and your teachers will be able to listen to you. Okay, but before that, we will have a quiz, um, and before that, we'll have another announcement. So G1 has a Jalsa uh, coming up. Uh, Sirat al Nabi uh, Jalsa, uh, celebrating uh, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And we will be doing the Jalsa on Monday, the 29th of November, inshallah. So not very long to go. And it's your Jalsa for the students, so we want you to take part. So G1 students are invited to submit recordings by Sunday the 21st of November. So it's not very long to go, 9 o'clock is the deadline. If you can record um, whatever activity you want to take part in and send in that recording and then we can have a listen and then uh, the judges will select those that they think are the best suited okay now submit your recordings um, by email and in the subject box and it's really important that you do this you state the activity and the id uh, that you have your student id okay and that's in the subject box um, if you don't do that it becomes really quite difficult for us uh, to know uh, we have to go into the email and then find all the details whereas if it's in the subject box we can get to you very very quickly Okay, and the email address is ukquranclass at gmail.com. ukquranclass at gmail.com. So, what are the activities? There's Talawat, and Talawat will be from Surah Al Baqarah, verses 1 to 6. If you record yourselves and then send a recording of those um, uh, uh, verses in Arabic um, to us, and then uh, we will have a, a listen. Okay? We will also have a uh, hadith and we have yet to decide the hadith we're going to be um, reading, but we need to hear your voice. How will you re uh, read English? So if you can just uh, do the translation of Surah Al-Baqarah verses one to six in English, send a recording of those. And then when we listen to it, we will know um, whether your voice is um, clear enough okay, uh, for the hadith. Similarly for Malfazat, there's an activity for Malfazat. We have yet to decide which Malfazat um, it will be. But if you send the recording of the translation for Surah Al-Baqarah verses 1 to 6 in English, then we'll be able to listen to your voice. Also Nazim, if you send a recording of this particular uh, Nazim, Nur al Furqan, okay, the first six couplet, couplets, and I will show you um, for those that know uh, how to read Urdu, this is um, how it looks so that you can recognize it. Okay. Now, we are also going to have Kasida. So if you uh, can want to take part in that, send a recording of the first seven verses. And I will just show you that those are the, the verses that we are talking about. Okay. Those are the verses. So if I go back. And then there will also be a speech. So, um, Isir al Nabi. So, uh, uh, if you'd make a five minute speech, um, on any topic on the life of the Holy Prophet, okay, any topic, um, that's related to, um, our beloved master, 
and then send that to us and then we will uh, select from those that send us the um, entries. Okay, so if you want to take part in Tilawat, Hadith, Malfazad, Nizam, Qasida and speech, uh, you are welcome to send in um, uh, recordings for all of those. Okay, so um, you don't have to just decide on one only. Uh, you can send in recordings for all of those if you want to enter for all of those. Okay, okay, so that's the Jalsa announcement. This uh, material will all be posted onto the Google Drive, and so uh, you can download that and have a read over the weekend if you need to. Okay, so now let's now uh, go to our quiz, and if you just bear with me, I'll open up my um, PowerPoint. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so if I just bring that up on the screen and then go to my slideshow. And if I could just check with my colleague uh, that my PowerPoint has come onto the screen. Yes, it's on the screen. Okay, mashallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. Right then, so we have a quiz and you've done some quizzes um, already. Um, so you know the, the, the drill. But let's just go through um, some of the things uh, that we are uh, going to do this quiz. Okay, so it's just a fun way to remember some of the things that we're learning and just some simple rules and an idea as to how the quiz will be conducted. Questions will be displayed on the screen and each question will have four options as possible answers. You will find on your device at home that the questions then suddenly um, appear on your screen uh, with the answers and you can choose the answer that you think is best. And then once you've selected it, you have to press submit. Now it's really important that you press submit uh, because otherwise the answer doesn't come through to us. And if you're watching on a phone, sometimes you don't realize that there's a submit button there. You have to scroll up. Okay, so it's really important to remember to press submit. And then uh, we want you to try and do the answers on your own, but if you're younger, uh, you could take some help from your um, siblings and your parents who are around you. And then the answer will be shown on the screen and then we'll move on to the next question. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so the first question is, what do you do when reading soft elongation? Is it read for one count, prolong for two counts, prolong for three to five counts, or prolong for four to six counts. What do you do when reading soft elongation? Okay, a few more seconds. Okay, and if we can now have the, the results, please. So the most popular answer was prolong for two counts. Okay, so let's have a look. Indeed it is, you prolong for two counts, but it's soft elongation, so well done. Okay, Yarlene, Yarlene is when? Is it when Ya comes straight after a letter carrying a fatha? Is it when a Sakin Ya comes straight after a letter carrying a fatha? Is it a blank Ya? Or is it a Ya carrying a Sukun? What is Yarlene? Okay, we'll give it a few more seconds and we can have the answers now. Results, please. Oops, a daisy. Okay, what was, this, what was the, the most popular answer? So the most popular answer was Sakin Ya comes straight after letter carrying a fata. Indeed it is, yes, and that is the correct answer, so well done, okay? And the important thing to remember, it has to be a sakin ya, a ya that carries a sukun, um, and the letter before it has to carry a fatha. Those are the two things that define a, a ya lean. Okay, number three, wow lean is when? When a wow bears a sukun, a blank wow, a sakin wow comes straight after a letter carrying a fatha, or when a wow comes straight after a letter carrying a fatha. What is wow lean? Which of those options is wow lean? Okay, so I think we can have the results now. The most popular answer is sakin wow comes after letter carrying a fatha. 
So let's have a look. Yes, indeed. Well done. Uh, a sakin well. And that's the important thing. It has to be a sakin well, a well that carries a sagoon and the letter before has to carry a fatha. Those two things define what a waulin is. So well done. Okay, number four. Which of these is yali? And you can see that there's a number one in the box on the left and a number two on the box on the right. Which of those is yali? Is it number one? Is it box number two? Is it both of those? Is uh, box one and two a yali? Or are neither of them yali? Which of those is yali? Okay, so we can have the results. So most popular answer is option one. Okay, so let's have a look. Yes, indeed, it is. And Yalin is a Ya that carries a Sukun, and just before it is a letter that carries a Fatha. Okay, Fatha and then the Ya Sakin. And that is what you see in number one. In number two, you've got a Ya with a Sukun on it, but the letter before it carries a Kasra. And that is actually what we call a Ya Mad. Okay, question number five. Which of these is not an alif sakin or a hamza sakin. Which of these is not an alif sakin or a hamza sakin? Is it the box number one? Is it the box number two? Is it box number three? Or is it box number four? Which of those is not an alif or hamza sakin? Okay, if you can have the results. So most students have said uh, option four as the answer. Okay, so let's have a look. Yes, indeed. And that's because that alif in box number four has no sukun on top. Okay, it has no sukun on top. Number four is actually an example of alif mud. Okay, um, which you stretch out for two counts. All the others, box number one, two and three, they have either an alif or a hamza with a sukun on top. And the sukun is the most crucial thing that you have to remember. Without that, it's not a hamza sakin or an alif sakin. Okay, well done. Question number six, which of these is true for this example that you see on the um, screen? Okay, some letters are in black, some letters are in red. Which of these is true for this particular example on the screen? Do you ignore every letter without a stroke? Okay, so look closely at all the letters that don't have a stroke. Do you ignore every single one of those? Do you ignore all the letters that are in red? Do you read every single letter? Or do you ignore all the letters that are in black? Which is true for this particular example that you see on the screen? And if we can have the answers, please. The results, sorry. So most students have said, uh, option two, ignore all the letters in red. Okay, and indeed that is the correct answer. And this was testing you on how well you know combining. Okay, in the first one, there's a dal with a sukun, and whenever you see a saki letter, you have to join it to the most recent muttaharic letter, which happens to be this wow here. And that's why we ignore the alif in between. Here we have a lam saki, it's a a Sakin letter which has to join to the most recent Muttaharic letter. So we work our way back until we find this letter here. And those ones will join and that's why we ignore the letters in the middle. Now this alif here, we don't ignore this alif because this alif, even though it doesn't have a stroke, is an alif mud. Okay, so that's why the answer was ignore all the letters in red. So well done. Okay, which of these is true for this example that you see in the screen? You'll see letters in red and you'll see letters in black. Which of these is true for that example? Do you not press on the Lama Shaddad? Do you ignore all the letters in red? Or do you read every single letter, the black letters and the red letters? Or do you ignore all the letters in black? Which of those is true for that example that you see on the screen? Okay, if I can have the results, please. So 
So most popular answer is ignore all the letters in red. Okay. Yes, indeed. Well done. And again, that was testing how well you know combining. Here is a la mushadad. Okay, and mushadad letters always join to the most recent muttaharic letter, a letter that carries a stroke. So that's why this qaf joins with this la, and you can draw all the letters in between. And you are going to read all the other letters. So well done. How long is Madhe Sagir? Madhe Sagir. How long is Madhe Sagir? Is it one count, two counts, three to five counts, or four to six counts? Okay. So I know I'm rushing a bit, but we don't want to um, take up too much time. So if I can have the result, please. Um, most students have said it's three to five counts. Okay, let's have a look. Yes, indeed, it is indeed three to five counts. Well done. Okay. How long is Madhe Kabir? Madhe Kabir. Is it one count, three to five counts, four to six counts, or is it as long as you want? How long is Madhe Kabir? Okay, just a few more seconds and if we can have the answer, result, please. Most students have said that it's four to six counts. Yes, indeed, four to six counts. Um, it's the one that's slightly longer, okay? And the way to remember it sometimes is when this sagir begins with an S, so it's shorter, okay? So that's one way of remembering. But well done, most of you got that one right. What is a letter that carries a fatha called? Is it muftu, maksur, Mazmum or Ishbaya? What is a letter that is carrying a fatha called? Okay, if we can have the result, please. More students have said that it's Maftu. Okay, so let's have a look. Yes, indeed, it is Maftu. And the way to remember that is the fatha has a fatha. -ha. Okay, fattaha. And if you look in maftu, fattaha. So that's one of the ways that you can remember that a letter that carries a fatha is maftu. Okay, so that was quite important to know because you need to know that for the next um, question. Which of these is the shortest? Is it a maftu wow? Or a wow mud? Or a wow lean? Or a mud sagir? Which of those is the shortest? And if we could have the result, please. Most students have said that Muftu Wow is the shortest. Indeed, it is. Well done. Muftu Wow is a wow that carries a fatha and it's one count, whereas the others are longer. Okay, well done. Let's move on. So, which of these is the longest? Is it Maftu Alif, Alif Mad, Madhe Sabir, or Madhe Kabir? Which of those is the longest? Okay, so I know I'm rushing, uh, but if we could have the result, please. Um, more students have said that Madhe Kabir is the longest. Well done, yes. It is indeed. Madhe Kabir is the longest and Muftu Alif there is the shortest. Okay, well done. So that now concludes our quiz, which we um, went through fairly quickly, I know, uh, but we want you to go to your breakout rooms and uh, recite some of the uh, practice that you've done during the week. So we don't want to take up that time. Now, remember that if you got the answers, not all of them not quite right, don't worry, because um, we learn when we get things wrong. Okay, that's one of the beauties of quizzes, that you do the quiz, and if you didn't quite get the right answer, you learn what the right answer is. And then next time, you remember. And the Holy Quran is a lifelong journey, okay? You are always going to be learning something new every time you go to it. Um, and it doesn't matter whether we're teachers or students, we are all learning. So don't stress too much if you didn't get um, all of the answers correct. You will always be learning something new. Okay, so 
Um, with that, if I can now ask my um, colleague to open up the breakout rooms, please everybody go to your breakout rooms and uh, read with your teachers and enjoy, enjoy. And we'll meet you again for concluding dua at the other end of the class. Assalamualaikum. Yes, the breakout rooms have been opened. So Jazakmullah everyone for today. Uh, this we are now moving towards the end of our class. So before we recite the ending prayer, I will quickly go through the homework. So today the homework is that every student must uh, do the exercise 19.2 and 19.3 in page 81 and 82 and continue to practice about the al madul Sagir and al madul Kabir. So let's end our class with the recitation of the Holy Quran. Could I have a student on the mic to recite the ending prayer? Yes, can I ask G1437 to unmute the mic? Yes, G1437. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam. Could you recite for me this prayer? Start with Dawud and Tasmiya. Sure. A'udhu billahi mida shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Allah Akbar Hadi Bil Quran Azeeb. Oh Allah, have mercy on me through the Quran and the Great. Waj al Huli Iba Bawadu Rawa Hudawa Rahmatan. And make it for me the leader, the light, the guidance, and the mercy. Okay, Jazakallah. So with that, this concludes our class for today. Have a good weekend, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.